Nice to see all you friends out there. And um, as usual, I would always say, you know, thank you for a nice hot day. Beautiful, isn't it? Mid-September, and it's still 100 and whatever, you know. And, uh, you know, it's just baking away. But uh, a few more months, we'll be in good shape. You know what I mean? Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, I, um, I recently, this, this scripture was on my heart. We're going to be going into um, John 15. And uh, it's in verse 1 through 17, I think. And um, and it is, um, recently I retired. If if you can, yeah. My wife is saying that because she's like, you know why? She's like, we get some stuff done now around the house now. And uh, guys, you can relate to that, can't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which, you know, and I agree. So, uh, but I, um, you know, big question. Well, what happened was, was, I had someone come right up to me and they said, so now what are you going to do? And I'm like, yeah, that's a good question, you know? And, uh, you know, and I tried to explain to him in like 5,000 words. And, um, and but it's a good question, you know? And, and when I look back in the, um, you know, you look in the Bible and you look at these disciples and I really don't think that retirement word is really in their vocabulary, you know? I mean, they just... You know, God just took them and just ran them through and and, and just got every ounce of the fruit that we're going to talk about today out of them. And I hate to put it that way, but that's what God does. And he's like, all right, it's, it's time to roll and let's go. And, um, and I just, um, so bearing fruit. And, you know, when I look at... Um, these men, John, I mean, can you imagine John, John, you know, when you go into the book of Revelation, the guy was like in his mid nineties. Now picture yourself in your mid nineties. And what do you think you're going to be doing? You know what I mean? In your mid nineties. Okay. You know, he could have easily gone to God said, okay. You know, when he was in his eighties, he said, all right, I'm good. We've done a lot of stuff. And guys like, hang on, we got one more biggie to do. You know what I mean? And, uh, so, and, um, you know, and he got boiled, you know, things, you know, I'm too many of, I don't think many of us are going to get boiled in oil, you know, at 90 some years old, you know, but, um, and then you've got, um, Paul, this man took it right to the end. Finally, they took his head off. They took his head off. Cause they're like, we are tired of dealing with this guy. You know, this is Paul. He's out there proclaiming Christ. Just to hunt the Christians down. And then Jesus comes along, knocks them down, brings the light into his life. He says, now you're going to serve me. But you're going to have to go through some stuff, you know. And Paul, you know, I mean, he he took it right to the end. Right to the end. What an example, you know. And you can go on and on. James, he was the first martyr, you know. If you ever want to read the martyrs on how they died, you know, the first century church, you're like, mm -hmm. Man, that is tough. That's tough stuff. We don't have to go through that. None of us. We just literally go through our, our tough times, you know. And uh, Peter, there was another good one. You know, when it was time for him to die, they crucified him. And he's like, no, 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 no. Do it upside down. Because I'm not even worthy to die in the same fashion as what my Lord and Savior Jesus did. You know what I mean? So you look at these men. So... God had a beautiful way of taking that retirement word and just kind of throwing it back and said, okay, now let's move. Because me and my personality, I feel more comfortable when I'm in the game. I got to be in the race because I just can't sit around on a sofa and be thinking about these things, you know, eating bonbons or whatever it is, you know, but, um, so as we go into chapter 15, remember, Jesus has had the last supper with his disciples. Okay. He's already, he's told them um, about who is going to betray him and who's going to turn on him. All right. So you got Judas. He's going to, he's going to get cut off. And Peter, who is a huge fixture in the bible um he's going to deny jesus and uh and and he told he told his disciples it says i'm deeply troubled 
on what I'm about to tell you when he was sitting with these men. I am a very practical guy when it comes to my life. I am extremely practical when it comes to God's word. I always kind of thrust myself into these, these crazy guys here that he's talking to and think about where would I be in this bunch? You know what I mean? And I always look at it. We're like, this is my life too. You know, where am I in this mix? You know, and it's amazing how things in my life and things in your life, when God is deeply troubled sometimes, on the route that we take sometimes, the things that can enter our mind, just some of the things that we can say and do, our Lord actually has that kind of heart. Remember, he laughed. He cried. He wept. And he was troubled. So our Lord, that's who he is. So as we walk through this life and we make decisions, He's going with us, and he feels hurt. It's just like the Holy Spirit. When we do something, and we were like, oh, boy, you know, we feel it. And that's the whole thing. So he's taking them out from the Last Supper, down through the temple area, to this Passover period, and he's walking them down to the Garden of Gethsemane, okay? And this is exactly where it happened place where he's starting to prepare them and as they're going through the temple area the gates. i've never been to israel but this is what i read um about the gates have the um just you can see the grapes and and the fruit and above it which represents the fruitfulness that israel was supposed to be to the world which is exactly who we are to be to the world and that includes five o'clock when you're coming down sunrise and the people are going crazy and traffic and all that. And you're in the mix and you get these people doing like 32 miles an hour and it should be zipping along at about 50. You know what I mean? Then two. And you know where I go with this. You know what I mean? So our Lord, um, he's taking them down into, and it's amazing how he takes them right to the Garden of Gethsemane right there. He's talking about bearing fruit. How many times has God taken you into an area and talked to me about something in your life? Real quickly, I'll never forget, years ago, before, when I was in business, I was looking for a piece of business property to buy. And because when I, the place I was renting on 22nd Street in Pantano, it wasn't panning out. And the guy told me one day, you're going to have to leave. And I'm like... And go where? You know, I mean, you got to buy C2 property, you know, to set up a business. So I drove on down the street, you know, and Merle's Auto's right there. It was like a big empty lot right there. And I would literally pull in there and I would pray. I'm like, Lord, I don't know where to go. I have no idea. My wife will vouch for this. And, and I'm like, and I would do this for like months. And I'm like, same spot. I'm like, man. Well, about three months left after that, I ended up buying that piece of property. That was, God took me right to that dirt lot that was non-existent. It was just a parking lot, Merle's Auto. And I ended up buying that. I had to go to the city council and I had to split the land and all that. But it's amazing how God took me right where I was going to be. And God will do this in our lives. It's just incredible. And I'm just blown away. That's why I say the practicality, how, you know, God wants us to keep our eyes open. And just look where you're at. It says in the Bible, where the tree falls, it falls. Proverbs. Where it lies, it lies. Whether it falls to the north or to the south, that's where you're at. Folks, where you're at, watch the miracles that God does in your life. So we're going to be talking about the fruit, and I will get through this. Um, when you go into Galatians 5, fruit. You've got love, joy, peace, I'll just patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, Goodness and self-control. Today, we're talking about top three. That low-hanging fruit, love, joy, and peace. Of course, you got to shove that self-control one down there at the bottom. You know what I mean? You know, you're like, man, where'd that one come from? You know? And, uh, you know, that's the one. Remember when you were kids, you know, you get that report card, you know? And it's like when you're in elementary school, you get your grades, you do pretty good. 
you get, you know, B, C, Z, B, B, and then you get the citizenship, you know, and then you're like, man, boy, it's like that self-control and you can't shut up in class and all that stuff. That stuff comes back to haunt you, you know, so that's a good little throw in down there, you know what I mean? And uh, we all fall into that. But, um, but so what I want to do is we'll be in 15 and I want to start, I want to come in through act I want to start in verse 16 and do 17, and then we'll go back to one, okay? And it says in here, it says, in the caption here is, let's put in, who chose who here? That's the thing with Jesus. Who chose who? And it says in 16, it says, you did not choose me, he's telling the disciples, but I chose you, and he has appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And this is my command to love each other. So, how do you bear this fruit? And what's his command says? He boils it down to here to love each other. And you're like, so many times, you know, you're like, I, I gotta love? You know, are we talking to everybody? You know, we're talking like 80%. Who are we looking at here? You know what I mean? He says to love each other. And that's his command. Um, love the unlovable. You know? Look at Paul. Man. This is the guy that was hunting down the Christians. And then these disciples had to go and, you know, be with him. And they're like, oh. Yeah. You know, they're like, God, do you realize who this guy was? On who we used to be in our lives. The Lord Jesus has appointed you. He's appointed you, folks. You think about that. And he's given you fruit. Good fruit. You know, that's like when you go into, I got to bring up Sam's Club because David, you know, you go in the fruit section, you know, or Costco or Safeway, you walk in that fruit section, fruit smells good. Doesn't it? That, you know you're like, man, that, that's just, you know, so we can have that aroma of Christ in our lives that people can see real fruit, lasting fruit, not just some superficial stuff that just kind of like here and there. I mean, real fruit in our lives. And that's what God's looking for. And how does he say we do it? To love. That's what he told the disciples. He says, they'll know you by the love that you have for one another. You know, and of course, these guys are like, you know, they were oblivious to a lot of this stuff. But I'll tell you what, it took three years. And finally, after Jesus left, what a an example and what, what he set in their lives. And of course, he died for their sins. And that's when the Holy Spirit came. But still, the examples that we can be in other people's lives through the sufferings many times that we go through. Jesus went through sufferings. He didn't have any money, you know, he didn't have a house. They just traveled and he said, let's go. And they went. And sadly, many times what they do, you know, Peter's like, and he's always blowing it, this guy. Okay. And he's like, I'm going back to fishing. You know, the rest of them are like, all right, we're going with you now. You know what I mean? And they do. They all go back until the resurrection. And that's when he says, okay, now it's showtime. You're going to take care of my kids. You're going to feed my sheep. You're going to take care of my family. And that's what he did. And that's where these men come in. So, in verse 1, he's standing there. And remember, they're at the vineyard. They're, at, they're all the, you know, all the stuff that's growing right there. He says, I am the true vine. Right off the bat, he's claiming he's God. He's very public about this now. I am. Only God can say that. And the true vine, he is the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Folks, we are living in such turbulent times. So many people are out there are looking for so many different things. This is simple math. We sit here. You don't come in here for a show. You don't come in here for nothing else except for one thing. That the Lord would touch your heart through the Holy Spirit 
and we know where we're going and he, this is just iron sharpens iron now we're just equipping all of you. you guys are the saints that we would just get out there and he says and my father is the gardener so these guys are standing there and there's jesus explaining gardening to them he says my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear bear, uh, bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful so god so we this is about this isn't about salvation this is about bearing fruit so when we bear fruit it's about pruning how do we get pruned here does he cut it off you know, look at Peter. He pruned Peter. Judas, he was cut off. These disciples, I mean, the uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Jesus was very bold with them. Right in Matthew 21, it talks about the wicked tenant, about how the landowner gave power to the land to these tenants, and they were wicked. This is in Matthew 21. These disciples, they knew all about this stuff. And uh, and that was them. They were wicked. And every time the owner would send uh, workers and all that, they would. That's what they were doing. Look at Adam. He lost the garden. Remember in the beginning? He lost the garden. The dude stood there and he did nothing. He let his wife sit there and get totally deceived by the serpent. You know? A snake. He did nothing. He was cut off. He says, you know what? When God does that, I will find someone else to bear this fruit. And that's what he did. Um, the Pharisees were terrible. Adam lost it. But when Jesus came back, Adam lost the garden. Jesus came back and he took the garden back. Is what he did. And he explained to these men, my father, that's what he does in your life. You know, sometimes you wonder, I'm like, well, I wonder what God's most, what, 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 what tool does he use on me the most here? You know what I mean? Shovels, you know, weed eater, you know, blower, you know, maybe just a little sprinkling of water. We're all different. God prunes us differently. You know, it's like that big mesquite tree that I have in my front yard. I keep pruning that thing and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and that's what god does that's where that more fruit comes in god keeps pruning that low stuff you know and it we just spread out farther and farther and farther and even like with trees those trees they offer shade to how many animals down below offers coolness that's what god does because of what he does to us many times we'll help other people and it says in three, you are already clean because of the word that has been spoken to you. Remember in me and I will remain, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine and neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. We've been cleansed. We've been cleansed by the word. They harvested, they, they grew the grapes right there. They harvested them right there, and they cleaned them right there. They did it all. That's exactly what the Lord does in our lives. He plants, he grows, the fruit is harvested, is given, it's cleaned, and it's given out. That's how the Lord uses us. And just like when we go through Timothy, the guys are going through Timothy. Um, and what does it say? They, they would just keep a clean heart and to have a good conscience. This way, God can be effective in our life. You're looking at guy number one that I do. I'm always asking. I'm like, Lord, I need some help here. I really, truly need help. And that's all God wants. He wants us to, you know, we hear this on the news, you know, circle back, you know, we got to double back, you know, and, uh, you know, <laughs> but he, we just keep going to him. We keep going to him and God is responsive. He's obedient to what we want. 
He listens to us. So in five, I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I am him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he's like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire, and they are burned. You've seen Dan where he talks about you got to be grafted in, you know. you got the vine and the branch. You look at whatever you want. There's the vine, and then there's a branch. I was out this morning watering, and I got this big, Chili chippy and this pepper plant, you know what I'm looking at? I'm like, sure enough, there's a little branch, a little it's hooked right to the to the uh to the vine right there. It's hooked right to the stalk. You know what I mean? Everything. Fruit is a very natural process in us. You know, you don't see I don't see my lemon tree, you know, looking over at that pepper plant and guys like this competition, you know what I mean? Fruit doesn't do anything. It just hangs there because it's hooked to the vine. So pretty much, I guess that's all we got to do. We just got to kind of hang in there as long as abiding in him, hooked to the vine. That's what it takes. We don't have to be super duper Christians. We don't have to be super duper saints, the high level, whatever. We just have to abide in him and we will bear fruit. And God all of a sudden, once in a while, come in there and you're like, whoa, what was that? What's going on here? That's what God does. And he molds us and he shapes us and we bear more fruit. And I love it. I like the simplicity of this because all I got to do is hang in there. And how many times, we, you know, that's a good checklist, fruit. The fruit in your lives. You know what I mean? It's a really good checklist. And, um, and it's, um, it's something that um, is um, it's noticeable in people, you know? So we have that love. You got to have that love for each other. And you experience that joy, that indescribable joy. And uh, peace. And you go on and on, peace. We have that peace about it. And um, so God prunes us. And um, and if we don't bear fruit, then the Lord kind of, you know, we go through our, now remember one thing too. We go through our seasons in our lives. Many times, and that's what the farmer does. How many times does the Lord use the analogy of farming? And farmers, they do a lot of waiting. I think, you know, I've never been a farmer, you know, I can't, that's why I've never been that way. I mean, I've always liked camping out and doing things and all that, but I couldn't tell you about cows and bulls and, and plants and things like that. I'm not good. I can't even get on a horse. I don't think, you know what I mean? But, um, but the farmer's patient. We go through seasons in our lives where you're not going to have all this high activity. You can't look over and see someone else you're like, wow, I wish I was like that guy. You know what I mean? It doesn't go that way. He's going to get his idle time, and then all of a sudden, God's just going to, you know, the fruit is going to say, okay, God has appointed us, so we let him do this dirty work or the wild work. He's the one that pushes this in gear. And, um, and like it says in 7, if anyone, um, I'm sorry, in 7, it says, uh, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. That's a, when our, when we are aligned with what the Lord wants. You know, and of course, right off the bat, people said, well, you mean I can get that house? Like, well, or that truck, you know what I mean? I saw a really nice truck coming home, you know. Our desires change as we're in line with the Lord. You're not thinking about all of the stuff. What you're thinking about are other people. You that that's what happens. You're thinking of others, and it's just like with you know. I'm going to go back to when that guy asked me. He's like, "Well, what are you going to do now?" You know, and I'm like, "Well, I just want to serve." You know, I just I don't know. Serve who? Well, 
I want to serve the Lord, but you know, and but I, you know, well, you know, I don't know all the guts of it. I don't. You don't. But our hearts and our wills align with the Lord, and we follow Him, and then He takes us into areas that we would never even dream of, and there's our satisfaction and our joy, and is complete for those who serve the Lord, and um. And in eight, this is my Father's glory, that you may bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be disciples. God wants you to have more. I know you've heard some pastors on TV say that God wants you to have more. Not that kind of more. He wants you to have more fruit. As a true Christian, this is where you truly walk with satisfaction. You're like, Man, you can start seeing this this system working with the Lord. And he's like, there you go. That's what it takes. My will will be your will, will be done. And we just walk in his obedience. And in nine, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Jesus is telling these men, look, guys, I love you. The Father, the same love, is the same love that I give. Just like in Second Corinthians. The same love that the Lord gives us is the same love that we're going to give out to others. Okay? We just don't store this stuff up inside. I mean, just experiencing his love is good enough. Now he's like, now give it out. Amen. Just give it out. You know, we're a drink offering. God pours in, and it's just squirting out wherever. You know what I mean? And people are looking, and they're like, wow, you know, this is really cool. And, you know, that's the interesting thing about walking with the Lord. You just never know where you're going to be dishing it out, you know. And he, and, he's, and he gives us our seasons, and we rest. So don't think that you're not being, you know, being a bad Christian, like, and there's really nothing going on. Well, maybe God's healing you up, maybe. Sometimes we get beat up, too, and he rests us up, and, and we're in his will. So, guys, it's okay to go home and take a nap once in a while, okay? That's cool. You knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got a little activity going on here in the front row, yeah. It's funny. But it's good. I was telling my wife this morning, I'm like, you know what, hon? I go, now that I'm, I, I don't even like to use the word retired. I, I tell her, I said, I'm just going to start saying I do other things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do other stuff, you know? You, you can relate to this now, huh? Yeah, see? And um, so... I tell her, I say, you know, I think my time, time clock is kind of shifted. It's like ever since I, I'm not, I'm doing other stuff in my life. I get up like at four in the morning, and and I'm getting tired. Or, you know, like at eight, eight thirty. Usually, I had a, a a long fuse. Now I've noticed my 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 effective time has kind of changed. You know, and I guess, I guess we just have to be understanding. And, and just had realizing that, you know, our bodies do change and all. But at the same time, too, I think God knows what we're going through. You know, we, we're on a timetable as far as our bodies get beaten up and all that. But so, and we can have joy laughing about some of this stuff. You're like, I just don't have what I used to have. You know what I mean? And, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Because you're talking to a guy here who's found things to do with his life now. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, and in nine. He talks about, so I have loved you and uh, remain in my love. And if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. God wants this full circle. He wants us to realize what's going on. He wants us to see the effectiveness in our lives. Because I'm kind of a simple guy. And even Jesus, he spoke in parables and he and he spoke in word pictures. You know, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. He guys like, that's good. Because these disciples needed all the help that they could get. And and that's where we come in too, you know. So and and to show that love for one another. See, and I wrote this down too, because I thought, you know, I um as a husband, it's good to say, honey, I love you. Right? That's verbalizing. But it's also good to do something, you know, 
kind of complete the circle there but it's showing that fruit you know what i mean just like a, a church it's nice to say we love you and then it's nice for us as a church to say how can we help you see this is where the fruit comes out saying one thing you know is one thing but doing it the one will lead to another true faith you will bear fruit and as long as we abide in him just hang in there we're going to show fruit you might have questions don't question that you can see and um and our joy is complete in love it talks about that that's where our joy comes from folks happiness god's joy is permanent that's a fruit that's a fruit that's permanent it's going to be that way he wants long lasting fruit happiness in this world and emotions those are like this those are roller coasters because the world's going to let you down you know we let each other down a lot of times you know i mean that's that's never ending but the lord doesn't his joy is complete and um we go from tears to you know people ride the wave of lottery tickets to whatever's going the the popular thing of the day whatever it is it's just like this that's why we sit here and we get fed this is why you sit there at night and you find that quiet time and you read a little bit You're like lord i need a little little charging here god brings it on so i'll close it out here um and these men too you know you got to remember one thing too these 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 men were i was saying john and paul and peter all these and many more they were bond servants they chose to stay there you know they 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 took that mark of christianity willingly and they knew what was coming they wanted that that's what you want this is what i want i don't mind taking the the verbal stuff and you know how it's going to be you know crazy times as far as people being persecuted and all that i guess if i have to but like you would but we choose this but remember he chose us first like you know what i'm in it's like poker you're like i got a cruddy hand here but you know what they don't know you know sliding in all i gotta do is have that 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 look and a lot of times you can win the pot you know what i mean you can pull some big things off you know with the lord playing with that low hand it don't make no difference we have a savior i'm gonna close it off here and it says <clears throat> in 12 my command is this to love each other as i have loved you remember he's going to the cross here real quick greater love has no one um than this that he laid down his life for his friends and that's exactly what jesus did here quickly Folks, we even have this in the military, in man's world. It's called the, um, the MOH, the Medal of Honor. How many times men have died to save others? They don't get to go back home to their family. You know, I grew up with that in that environment. When I, was, when I grew up in, in the military with my, my dad, you know, how many dads never came home? It was sad. But these men willingly died. Our Lord Jesus knew. And he died for us on the lousiest day you ever had. He died for everybody's sins. Covered everybody. But only a few take it. Sadly. Okay. I no longer call you servants. No, no. Hang on. Greater is love. 14. You're my friends. In 14. Here we go. If. You do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends. So what he's done here is, you know what? Standing in front of a garden, 
he's pulling these men in even deep, deeper. He says, I'm telling you this because we're family here. And I love you guys. And he's given them the simple truth of how to stay in him. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Which is exactly what you are going to do to others. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I have appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name, and this is my command, to love each other. Pretty simple, isn't it? And yet, well, we can deviate from this stuff sometimes real quick. You're like, you know, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? That's okay. God is up to discussions. He's up to, you know, I'm sure there were times where these disciples were just going crazy sometimes, and he's probably like, ah, let's huddle up here real quick, you know, let's huddle up. <laughs> We're going to talk about this, you know. That's what he does in our lives. We'll huddle up. You know, keep our path straight. Remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean out on your understanding, okay? And he'll keep your path straight, okay? And well, I, I kind of missed a line there, yeah. But, uh, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. Uh, acknowledge uh, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll keep you past straight thank you yeah my wife is like yeah. i'm like is she chewing gum over there i know that i just kind of i'm trying to, i know time wise um it's true we kind of come out we'll keep you past straight you know it's like we come flying out of the alley you know it's like it's who we are that's who they were of putting them into a garden to hit such a powerful chapter that we're reading 2,000 years later. And it's just as effective. It'll always bear. You'll always smell this. You're like, man, the people can smell the aroma of Christ in us. Amen? Thank you, Lord, for just powerful, powerful passages. You were powerful, Lord, and yet you were so loving. And there you go. Lord, that we can just love on each other. And the only way we're going to love on each other is to follow your will. You know, because we're not love machines, but you were. So, Lord, anoint us, guide us in our lives. You've appointed us that we would bear fruit that the world can see. And they, and they, and they, and they, and they, they might ask about this, they, you know, whatever it is, Lord, that you would just continue working and guiding us and showing fruit in our lives. And um, and just thank you for everything, because there's more fruit coming that we would be patient too. So God, thank you for your time. We love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.